Hello all. In today's video lecture on physiology, we will be looking at one of the most important energy yielding pathways of any biological system that is glycolysis. When we say the term glycolysis, it can be essentially broken down into two sub terms that is glyco and lysis. Glyco is anything that is related to glucose or a carbohydrate and lysis is the breakdown. So what we are talking about over here in glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose to yield energy. That is the whole reason why it is called as an energy yielding pathway. Now when we say breakdown of glucose or lysis of glucose, it can be either complete breakdown of glucose or incomplete breakdown of glucose. The pathways are slightly different but the first pathway is common and it is usually the EMP pathway which we will be looking into detail today. There are also other methods of glycolysis or other methods of breakdown of glucose. Those are HMP and ED pathways which we will be looking into in the subsequent classes. EMP pathway stands for Emden, Meyerhoff, Parnas pathway. Those are the three scientists who have elucidated this pathway. So we have taken the first letters of each of their names and that is why it is called as EMP pathway. This pathway is one of the common pathways which is found in most of the organisms and it is the first step of the breakdown of glucose. Now when I say there is a catabolic reaction, it means there is breakdown of some particular product. So these pathways what I have shown you earlier that is the EMP, HMP and ED pathways are part of catabolic pathways or they are different types of catabolic pathways which are producing energy. And this energy or the precursors which are formed during these pathways are then further used for other anabolic pathways or to synthesize cell components. So these pathways and in particular the EMP pathway is a catabolic pathway which is helping to produce energy or which is giving us energy or yielding energy. Now this pathway can be part of either the aerobic breakdown of glucose or the complete breakdown of glucose. Or it can also act or serve as the first step of anaerobic breakdown of glucose or incomplete breakdown of glucose. Now when we say it is aerobic breakdown or complete breakdown of glucose, it means glucose is being completely broken down into carbon dioxide. We know that glucose is a 6 carbon sugar. So aerobic breakdown or complete breakdown would mean that all the 6 carbons in glucose are being released in the form of carbon dioxide. When we say anaerobic breakdown or incomplete breakdown of glucose, it means the six carbons in glucose are not being broken down to release carbon dioxide alone. Instead, along with carbon dioxide, we may have ethanol or we may have some organic acids like lactic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid, etc. So those pathways are, com are constituting the anaerobic breakdown or the incomplete breakdown of glucose and we have aerobic breakdown of glucose as well. Whatever be it, EMP pathway is usually the first step of the catabolic reaction. It is the first step of either aerobic or anaerobic breakdown of glucose to yield energy. Please remember that both of these pathways are having only one sole aim that is to produce ATP or that is to produce energy. Now the EMP pathway is divided into 10 steps. The first four steps are called as the preparatory phase. And the next six steps are called as the payoff phase or this is the phase when we get back our energy. So in the preparatory phase, the cell does have to spend a few ATP. But in the payoff phase or in the energy yielding phase, we get back all our ATP. In fact, we get more ATP. That is why it is called as payoff phase or energy yielding phase. So there are 10 steps to be followed in the EMP pathway. Let us look into what are these 10 steps. Now this is the pathway. The complete EMP pathway, I have just put it over here so that you may note down if you wish to. But I will be detailing the pathway one by one or step wise. So this is the pathway in totality. But let us study about each of the steps in detail. So we start the EMP pathway with glucose. Now glucose is getting converted into glucose 6-phosphate. When we say it is getting converted into glucose 6-phosphate, it means it is getting phosphorylated or there is a phosphate group that is getting added. Now, whenever we have transfer of a phosphate group, it has to come from some molecule. Now, here 
it is the atp that is getting giving its phosphate to glucose 6 glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate which means atp in the process gets converted from a triphosphate into a diphosphate this process wherever there is a transfer of phosphate group please remember the name of the enzyme will end with kinase and here because glucose is a hexose sugar or it is a 6 carbon sugar the name of the enzyme is hexokinase wherever there is a kinase involved there will be mg2 plus ion that is coming into play so hexokinase will work only with the help of the cofactor mg2 plus so in the first step glucose is getting phosphorylated to form glucose 6 phosphate which is happening with the help of hexokinase enzyme. In the next step, this 6 carbon sugar which is having a phosphate group is getting isomerized to form fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose is an aldose sugar containing aldehyde group whereas fructose is a ketose sugar containing ketone group. So we just have isomerization reaction, nothing added, nothing removed. That's why the name of the enzyme is phosphoglucoisomerase. If you see over here, you just need to think of the name of the substrate and add on the name of the enzyme that is catalyzing the reaction. So the next step is glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase. Now the third step, if you see here, the first and the third steps are irreversible. In the third step, fructose 6-phosphate gets converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate or you can also call it as biphosphate. Here, there was only one phosphate group. Now, there is one more phosphate group that has got attached to it, which means again we have a phosphorylation reaction. Obviously, who is giving us the phosphate? ATP. So, ATP gets converted into ADP and the enzyme name is phosphofructokinase. Remember, everywhere there is a kinase, you need to have the Mg2 plus ion. So, the first and the third steps are wherein phosphorylation happens and in both the cases, we have ATP being broken down to form ADP. Please remember our aim is to produce ATP at the end of the reaction but in these two steps ATP is being utilized. In the next step fructose 1,6-bisphosphate which is a 6 carbon compound is now getting broken down into two 3 carbon compounds. One is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the other one is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So we have fructose which is a carbohydrate being broken down into an a ketone group or a ketose sugar that is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and an aldose sugar that is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. The enzyme that is helping in breakdown of fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate into 2, 3 carbon sugars is aldolase enzyme and these 2, 3 carbon sugars are exactly the same. They are isomers. It's just that the functional group is different. Here we have a ketone functional group. Here we have an aldehyde functional group. So, they, these two can be interconverted with the help of the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Why is it called as triose phosphate? It is a 3 carbon sugar and it is phosphorylated. Hence, it is triose phosphate isomerase which converts dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Now, the rest of the reaction continues with glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate alone. So, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which is an aldehyde is being converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate or biphosphoglycerate. Remember, aldehyde is being oxidized to form a carboxylic acid or glyceric acid, glycerate. Now, when this is getting oxidized, you need to have something else that is getting reduced because it's a redox reaction. And whenever there is a redox reaction involving NAD or whenever there is a redox reaction that is involving a reducing equivalent, name of the enzyme automatically is dehydrogenase. So, the full name is glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase. Remember, put the name of the substrate, write the name of the enzyme that is catalyzing the reaction and you have your entire enzyme. So, if G3P or glyceraldehyde is getting oxidized, something has to get reduced that is NAD or NAD is getting converted into NADH2. If you see here, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate had only one phosphate. Whereas 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate has 2 phosphates. So, you also have inorganic phosphate getting added over here. Phosphorylation is occurring. But mainly, it is a redox reaction being catalyzed by the dehydrogenase enzyme. And in this process, NAD, which is a coenzyme that is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is getting reduced to form NADH2. Now, this is the ne next step is the one where we are having the production of ATP wherein 
one three bisphosphoglycerate gets converted into three phosphoglycerate. So we have one of the phosphate groups getting released, and the moment the phosphate group is getting released, ADP grabs it and gets converted into ATP or diphosphate gets converted into triphosphate. Please remember, whenever there is transfer of phosphate group, name of the enzyme is kinase. So we have phosphoglycerate kinase, and if there's a kinase, you need to have Mg two plus. In the next step. 3-phosphoglycerate is getting converted into 2-phosphoglycerate. Now here there is no addition or no deletion. It is just that the phosphate is getting shifted from the third carbon to the second carbon. So here there is the name of the enzyme that is involved is called as mutase. So we just have conversion of 3-phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Just the shift of the phosphate. From the third position to the second position. In the next step, 2-phosphoglycerate is getting converted into phosphoenol pyruvate. So, in this step, what happens is basically dehydration, or the 2-phosphoglycerate is losing a water molecule. It is getting dehydrated to form phosphoenol pyruvate. There is an enolic phosphate group that is coming. Remember, enol groups or enolic phosphate groups are high energy compounds. So we have 2-phosphoglycerate getting dehydrated to form phosphoenol pyruvate. That means you need to show the loss of one water molecule. And name of the enzyme over here is enolase. So the enolase enzyme is catalyzing the formation of an enol phosphate group. In the last step, phosphoenol pyruvate. Gets converted into pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So our end product of EMP pathway is pyruvic acid or pyruvate. The phosphate group here is getting released. Phosphoenol pyruvate is getting converted to just pyruvate. So we have the phosphate group getting released, and like I told you earlier, the moment a phosphate is getting released, the molecule that grabs it, the compound that grabs it, is ADP. So ADP grabs the phosphate or takes the phosphate and gets converted into ATP. This is the second step where we have production of ATP. And as I have told you earlier, the place wherever you have a transfer of phosphate group, either from ADP or to ADP, whatever it is, if there is transfer of phosphate group, name of the enzyme will be kinase. So here in this case, name of the enzyme is pyruvate kinase. Name of the substrate and kinase over there. So pyruvate kinase is catalyzing the last step of EMP pathway, wherein phosphoenol pyruvate is getting converted into pyruvate. In this step, the phosphate is being taken up by ADP to form ATP, and obviously, when you have a kinase, you need to show Mg2+ over there. So these are the ten steps of EMP pathway. Now. If you see here, when we talk about the ten steps, I have told you that the first four steps, that is one, two, three, and four, are the preparatory phase. And starting here, from here, the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glyceraldehyde three phosphate by the isomerase enzyme. Starting here till the end, we have the payoff or the energy yielding phase. Now, if we see here to note down the net reaction, what you need to know is. We need to see how many molecules of ATP are produced at the end of one cycle of EMP pathway. So, if we see this, glucose one glucose enters into the reaction, gives us two molecules. One is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and the other one is glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Glyceraldehyde three phosphate follows this entire cycle and gives us pyruvate. At the same time, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate gets converted into glyceraldehyde three phosphate and runs this entire cycle for the second time which means from one glucose molecule we are getting two molecules of pyruvate or pyruvic acid the reason is one comes from glyceraldehyde the other comes from dihydroxyacetone phosphate which gets converted into glyceraldehyde and gives us pyruvic acid or pyruvate if we see this we have utilized two molecules of atp one in the first step and one in the third step But we have produced more ATP. That is, one is from one three bisphosphoglycerate, three phosphoglycerate, and the other production of ATP is from phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. Please remember, when the substrate provides energy 
to form ATP. When the production of ATP happens at the level of the substrate, we call that as substrate level phosphorylation. So here ATP is getting produced or ATP production takes place with the help of the substrate that is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Hence, this is called as substrate level phosphorylation. If we see the net reaction, from one glucose, we have received two molecules of pyruvate. Two ATPs have been produced. Though four have been produced, please remember, we have utilized two ATPs. So, the net ATP obtained is only two. We get two NADH2. We will see that these NADH2 also participate in another reaction called as electron transport chain and provide us even more number of ATPs. And we have release of two water molecules. So, this is the net reaction of EMP pathway. Every time EMP pathway happens or is conducted in the cell, from every glucose, we get only two pyruvates and each of these pyruvates has a different fate. Like I said earlier, if it is an aerobic breakdown, the pyruvate will enter into a different type of cycle. If it is an anaerobic breakdown, the pyruvate goes into a totally different pathway. But at the end of the EMP pathway, irrespective of aerobic or anaerobic breakdown, from one glucose, we obtain two pyruvates, two ATPs, two NADH2 and two molecules of water. When we look into the regulation of the EMP pathway, the EMP pathway is very much regulated by the energy charge of a cell, especially the irreversible steps. That is the first step, the third step and the last step. These are mainly being regulated by the energy charge. Energy charge is the total pool of ATP, ADP and AMP. So if the energy charge is more, that is if the quantity of ATP is more in the cell, that itself gives a feedback to the EMP pathway and slows down the rate of glycolysis. So when there is too much of ATP in the cell, the glycolysis is getting slowed down. When the ATP is not sufficient, glycolysis rate is picked up. That is a major mode of regulation of EMP pathway. I hope you all have understood the EMP pathway. Key points to remember are, there are 10 steps in EMP pathway. The first four are preparatory phase. The next six are the payoff phase. In the first four steps, there is usage of ATP or utilization of ATP. But in the next six steps, there is ATP that is being produced along with NADH2, which is a reducing equivalent, which means to say that later it is going to give us more ATPs. Another point to remember is that whenever you have transfer of phosphate, between two molecules, the enzyme over there is kinase and if there is kinase, you need to write Mg2 plus ion as a cofactor. And if there is redox reaction that is happening with the help of a reducing equivalent such as NAD or FAD, the name of the enzyme is always dehydrogenase. So dehydrogenase is catalyzing a redox reaction whereas kinase is catalyzing a transfer reaction of phosphate. I hope you all have understood the EMP pathway. We will all meet in the next class for the next type of glycolytic pathway. Thank you.